Hello and welcome to another video. Dr. Sil here, junior doctor from Australia on the psychiatry training program. And in today's psychiatric analysis, we're going to be watching some footage on borderline personality disorder. This footage is from a man named Al Dean. He's an online freelancer and entrepreneur, and he runs a channel called the Self Improvement Blueprint. He suffers from borderline personality disorder, and he shares footage of when he's in a um, quote unquote episode of borderline personality disorder. Um, I saw a bit of the footage and I thought it was really uh, important uh, and helpful and insightful, You're very reflective. Uh, and so I thought we would do a kind of uh, kind of review of it uh, from a psychiatric perspective. So let's use this video as an opportunity to talk a bit about BPD. We can also talk about uh, the symptoms he's going through and also we can talk about some of the treatments. So if that sounds good, let's get into it. <music> So I've got a couple of videos on borderline personality disorder. So if you want to do deep dives into what it is, what are the symptoms exactly are, you can check them out. But as a quick run through, uh, it, borderline personality structures are something that um, evolve secondary to two things, you know, genetics, obviously you can get temperaments that uh, increase the risk of developing borderline personality disorder and also environments. Uh, so early childhood trauma, um, issues in attachment with caregivers, these things can increase the risk of of, of the traits that make up borderline personality disorder. And these traits are really, um, they're fundamentally an, an issue in, in the self, you know, who you are, the security of attachment with yourself, which then affects your security of attachment with others. And it leaks into problems in relationships. Um, you have, you know, highs and lows and it's called idealization and then, you know, um, uh, chaos and, and uh, you can, there's often self-harm and uh, frantic efforts to avoid abandonment, you know, um, and I've seen people threaten suicide to maintain relationships and things like that. Um, sometimes the self-harm is actually just about regulating emotions and, and really regulating emotions is another core issue in, in borderline structure or emotionally unstable personality disorder, depending on what the, the international classification of disease calls it emotionally unstable personality disorder, the DSM that the Americans, um, and a lot of Australia uses calls it borderline personality disorder, but, um, emotional regulations are a big one. And that's what really where a lot of problems come from is, you know, people aren't in, con in control of their emotions. The emotions are in control of the people. And within an hour, you can go from very, very high highs to very, very low lows. Uh, and that makes it very hard to manage a job, manage relationships, all those kinds of things. All right. So that's a bit about what borderline personality is. Let's check out the footage. Hi there. My name is Aldine. And... I want to talk about BPD. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube from therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists talking about BPD. Well, I, I want to speak about BPD from the angle of a person who has BPD because not saying that these therapists and psychologists and psychiatrists don't know what they're saying, but who feels it knows it. And who feels it and knows it can speak about it best. Right now, I'm going through what you'd call a BPD episode. But it's not what many of you would expect people getting really angry and throwing a tantrum and being aggressive and all the negative emotions associated with a BPD episode. For me, I'm more of a, what they qualify as a quiet borderline personality disorder. So I'm, I'm high functioning, but I do suffer from all of the symptoms that BPD persons would typically suffer from. It's just that I don't show it on the outside. People would look at me and think I'm so normal and I hold on a job and all of that, but if they could only use a magnifying glass and see inside me, they'd know what I'm going through, what I've been going through for years, how much I despise myself, how much 
I don't, I don't even have an identity. I don't even know who I am. For us people with BPD, we have a negative self-image. We have tumultuous emotions. One minute we could be smiling and in the next 10 minutes, you hate yourself, you hate the world, you want to kill people. Wow, yeah, I think we'd just take a break there, but <clears throat> he's already raised some really uh, important symptoms. And, you know, he's talking about this this negative self-image and, and this, I don't even know who I am, right? Um, and for so many people, we take that for granted, that we have a secure sense of self. And the development of a self is a very complicated thing. But uh, let's see if we can just simplify it a bit. Uh, essentially, a, a child cannot develop a self if they're not seen, right? If they're not attuned to by a primary caregiver. So you need uh, a, a parent or a caregiver to, to, to really see a kid, to, to understand that, the, to, you know, it doesn't have to be a hundred percent, by the way, so it's about, it's all about being good enough. Um, but it's, it's about uh, at least 20% or 30% of the time seeing the kid, knowing what the kid is crying. Why is that kid crying? What's what's going on for that kid? Understanding the the life of that kid, like what that kid is going through, and you can imagine, you know, like parents who have been through trauma themselves, uh, or are you know addicted to drugs, or have a mental illness like psychosis. When the, if someone isn't based in reality, it's very hard for them to be a caregiver uh, and and understand what the kid's going through. And uh, and so later in life, when that kid develops, uh, these are the kind of symptoms you can get. Um, look, just as a side note, because a, a big theme in D, uh, in BPD is a sense of helplessness. But I just want to remind everyone that with long term uh, DBT therapy, and we can talk a bit about that at the end. So stay tuned. Uh, the outcomes are very positive. You know, 80, 90 percent of people have positive outcomes uh, after five, 10 years of therapy. So it's a long term thing, but it gets better every year as the frontal cortex strengthens and is able to repress those emotional tidal waves from the midbrain, the, um, the, the different uh, limbic structures that generate uh, these strong emotions. Um, this is heartbreaking to watch, but he's clearly a really, you know, he's just trying to share his story, you know. Oh, let's keep watching. It's frantic, it's frightening, it's terrible. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Right now, I feel awful. I, I just wish I could cure myself from BPD. I wish I could cure everyone who's suffering from BPD. I just want you all to know that you're not alone. There's something... Um hopeful about Aldine and his tone. And I guess I just want to make the point that there's some people with BPD um, that have lost hope uh, and that's that can get very dangerous. Um, and I, I can just hear in the parallel of someone with hope is, I wish I could just cure it. There's a, there's a, a, a kind of unconscious li like underpinning to that, that, you know, I'm, I'm going to survive, I'm going to live with it. I just wish I didn't have to live with it. But it's very close to, I wish I could just escape it. And I don't want it anymore. And that's, you know, when someone's hopeless and they, they feel they're stuck with BPD for the rest of their life and then their life is falling apart, that's where self-harm and suicide are very high-risk things you have to assess for as, as a doctor. Um, so uh, anyway, I just that, that's a parallel I wanted to, to note. And I really want to help people. In helping myself, I want to help you also. So, maybe you've been going through what I've been going through for years and don't know what it is. Ah, if you've been experiencing self-hate, if you've been having a lot of turmoil inside, you jump from happy to sad to angry to ecstatic. If you have awful relationships. You're in love with somebody one minute and then the next minute you hate them. 
I just want to make a diagnostic point here. And remember, this is all speculation. I'm just, you know, a junior doctor from Australia watching footage from someone who's shared it online. So I'm not diagnosing anything. Um, but I wanted to make a point of uh, clarifying, thing, uh, clarifying diagnoses in, in BPD because it can be tricky. Uh, if you ask someone with BPD all the depressed symptoms, they'll say yes to everything because they're, they're going to feel like they've never enjoyed anything. They're going to feel like they're in a chronic low mood. There's going to be problems in concentration, sleep, guilt, um, self-harm. They're, they're going to report all the symptoms while they're low. But what you need to do is observe over time. And, and he's kind of giving you um, a really interesting observation here, which is at times he's very high. So, so it's not depression because, it, it, you know, if you're depressed, it's two weeks of all those symptoms and it, it anhedonia in depression you know the inability to experience joy um you, you don't feel super in love with people you don't feel super enjoying but, but with bpd you do get those highs so is it mania is he getting mania than depression well mania is a sustained period it is uh definitely days and days and days sometimes weeks um and it doesn't stop you know it, it, it it's two hours a night of sleep and you feel incredibly energetic and you make terrible decisions but you think they're great decisions and you don't see any negative you make you know so mania is, is, is really sustained but in bpd it's it's highs and lows it spikes up it, it drops down it within as he says within 10 minutes you know you don't get that in um uh in in pure mania if you are just here and then all of a sudden you just drift off into thoughts and you don't even hear people calling, you just disassociate. There are so many negative things associated with BPD. It Dissociation, guys, is an important symptom. I'm sorry I'm pausing so much, but um, a lot of things are happening right now that we have to unpack. Dissociation is a defense mechanism. Okay, it's considered uh, a kind of premature a true or primitive defense mechanism. It's kind of like something you develop as a child um, uh, and gets strengthened as a, as a child. Uh, because when you're a kid and you're going through trauma, uh, you cannot fight it and you cannot run away. So what are you, what's your next option? If you can't fight or flight, uh, you freeze and uh, you escape the situation, but you escape within by dissociating, by getting away from yourself. And uh, a lot of people have been through traumas. As kids r recall seeing it from a third person point of view and that kind of thing. Um, and so that makes sense. It was totally there for a good reason. And, it's, and, it, and it was very helpful when you're a kid. The problem is it's not helpful when you're an adult. It's unhelpful. It's an unhealthy uh, thing uh, that, that, that needs to change in time, you know, uh, because you can't hold a job if you dissociate. You can't focus on things if you dissociate. And, and people can do bad things when they dissociate, right? And here's a question for you guys to put in the, you know, your answers in the comments down below. If someone attacks someone else when they're in a dissociated state, how do you give them consequences? Like what, what should you do? Because I don't have the answer for this. It's, it's like if someone is violent when they're dissociated, should they be considered, you know, say they went to court, should they be considered not guilty due to mental illness or should they be uh, held guilty and accountable? Um, it's a tricky situation uh, and I don't have a good answer, but maybe when I'm a consultant psychiatrist, I will. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so let me know your thoughts. It'd be really interesting to see those comments. Let's keep going. If you are going through any of these emotions, whether it's on the inside or on the outside, for me as a quiet BPD person. Just to be honest, I've never heard this expression of quiet BPD. And so I, um, but it, this is really interesting to hear it. It's obviously going to be something that's going to be missed and not diagnosed because uh, it's, you know, working in a, a hospital. I work in hospital wards um, with people who are not quiet. You know, that this is, they're in crisis uh, and, and high risks as well. So, um, yeah, I can imagine that this would get missed a lot. The other thing to note is this painting behind him um, is interesting. It, it looks like it's a woman in the rain um, and... I wonder if that, if he chose that painting because that's how he feels like, you know, maybe he's always in terrible weather or I want, like, you know what I wonder? I wonder why he chose that painting. It's an interesting painting. Aldine, if you watch this, please let us know. I'm unlike persons with BPD that express themselves outside that they get angry with people on the outside and tell them they hate them and 
throw stuff and shout. Instead, I yell at myself in the inside. I tell myself how much I hate myself. I, I keep on reliving my childhood, the things that my father told me. I keep reliving it. I keep putting myself down. No matter how good I do, it's never good. I'm, I think I'm the worst person in the world. No matter what I do, it's never good enough. That's a very common thing I hear. If, if a parent is never you know, happy with how their kid's going, the kid will develop a learned helplessness. Okay, you can look into the studies of learned helplessness in, in, uh, in other animals like um, in monkeys and stuff, um, and it's it's a striking model of of depression and uh, anxiety and BPD. And a lot of people who are diagnosed with depression and anxiety also have undiagnosed BPD. Um, I don't have the numbers for that. That's just an observation I've made, and that's not science. It's just my opinion. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's pretty common and missed, which is a shame because the management is, uh, different for depression, anxiety versus BPD, uh, and the focus of management is different. So it's important to get diagnostic clarification and see a psychiatrist if you need diagnostic clarification. I see myself as horrible, but I want to help others. I want to help to change and help people like me. People who have been going through this terrible, awful, wicked, evil sickness called BPB. So I want to use this avenue called YouTube to help others. Even though I'm going through this episode right now, I have actually made inroads into BPD. I have found ways to help to control it. And I want to pass on what I've learned to you to help you. This theme of underlying hope is so nice. You know, it's so good. Um, I'm so, uh, you know, I'm definitely going to go let's go right now let's hit subscribe i'm definitely going to like the video to support it if you enjoy this video please consider subscribing and liking it and i'm going to follow our dean's journey as well maybe i'll have him on a podcast one day so if you want to learn more about bpd how to control it how you can help yourself then you should check out my channel Self-improvement blue tr print. That's the channel. For me, for you, for all of us. Thank you for watching. So I think after seeing such um, insightful footage on BPD, we should talk just a briefly about the management and we can do longer videos later. Just leave me a comment if you want more on it. But really the mainstay fundamentals in management of BPD is, is really shifting from emotions controlling the brain to the brain controlling the emotions, um, so to speak. And so it's all about DBT. So this document here um, is a bit of an overview of DBT that I found online, which is really good. Um, a key... Uh, there's, there's kind of like five domains, right? There's the mindfulness domain, which is really, um, uh, that really helps avoid dissociation, brings you back into your body and, and, and lets you observe what's happening within you. Um, and so a big part of mindfulness is understanding that all emotions have a start, a middle and an end. And sometimes you just got to ride the wave. There's the distress tolerance, which a big part of is, is distraction and, and doing things that you find meaningful when you're feeling distressed, hopeless, suicidal, whatever it is. There's lots of other techniques. A cold shower is incredi incredibly powerful. Smiling, temperature, all these different ideas. Emotional regulation is another core part of BPD. Oh, there it is. Look, literally says, ride the wave. Like <laughs> This too shall pass. That's a great line. Who says that? That, that was uh, Tom Hanks talks about that in one of his interviews, which I loved. Um, uh, interpersonal effectiveness. Yes. Yeah, so now it's all about once you can regulate your emotions, you then have to regulate your relationships, um, which can get affected by your emotions and the others as well. Um, and having right good boundaries, you know, so lots of helpful um, acronyms there. And then cognitive distortions is really the unhelpful thinking styles that come when people are emotional, right? We all do it. We all do it. Um, catastrophization, uh, what are some others? You know, you've got mind reading, generalization, uh, should states.
placements, gen- judging, there's lots. Um, and so being able to label what thinking style you're doing and, and cut it out is really important. And that's um, that last part, which is probably one of the most important parts is important phone numbers. So safety planning. Something I find kind of frustrating as a, as a clinician uh, is if someone uh, kind of is doing well, and and they f- kind of try they they, f- they 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 kind of minimize their mental illness because they're having a good day and they don't need to do the mindfulness work or the homework or the exercise, and it's like no, it's because you're doing well that this is the opportunity to focus on your mental health in a good safe space. But I get it. You know, everyone wants a holiday from their stresses, and and people's mental health can be a stressor, of course. So I do get it. Um, so another really cool document is this one. So this document is the activity menu and, um, a big part of BPD is distraction and activities to, to, to get you away from your emotions and just look at this document. It's from psychology tools. Um, you do have to get a account, uh, to, to find this. So I don't know if I'm sharing, um, (laughs) protected things, but you can get a free uh, trial and download this. So I think it's fine to share it anyway, psychology tools. That's the plug. Um, not affiliated with them at all, but I love this document. And this is just all the things, like some some people say, oh, there's nothing I can do to regulate my emotions. And then I pull this document out. Oh, have you tried? Pet an animal, walk a dog, ride a horse, volunteer at an animal shelter, go board watching, go fishing, listen to birds, visit the zoo, go for a walk, go for a run, go for a bike ride, go for a swim, go for a hiking, go cycling, go to the gym, go bowling, da 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 And I just, I, I do the whole page. <laughs> I just try to go through so much. Um, and I really like the connect with people one. Like just do something nice for someone. Um, uh, the music is very good. Uh, travel is not always realistic. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's a really useful document. So that's what I wanted to talk about. Look, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it insightful and helpful. If you want me to talk more about BPD and different strategies of managing it, please leave comments down below. If you find this channel helpful, please consider joining the club. You know, join us. Join us. (laughs) Sorry. Um, Yeah, you know, I'm a junior doctor from Australia just doing videos uh, on my Sundays off off of work. So uh, I really appreciate your support. And if you enjoy it, please leave it a like. And that helps the YouTube algorithm and me um, have a sustainable channel. But uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next video and I wish you just a beautiful day full of love and good things and I'll see you guys later. All right, bye for now.